G'day and welcome to episode number 45 live. This is the episode with Nathan Parnham on The Sporting Parent. Now, while we are waiting for Nathan to hop on and join us in this live interview with him on his podcast episode, I want to give you a quick background on Nathan. Now, Nathan has worked at the Parramatta Eels as a strength and conditioning coach in the NRL. He has worked with the Australian Rugby Women's Sevens, who actually won the gold medal at the Rio Olympics in 2016. He is now the Director of Strength and Conditioning at Brisbane Grammar and the author of The Sporting Parent. So I would absolutely love to make this as engaging as possible and have you join in the conversation with us. So hello and welcome to the episode. G'day Daniel and thank you for saying hello. Let us know where you are tuning in from and joining from. I'm gonna click on a couple of waves here to say hi to people. Thank you for watching. Azaya, good to see you. Harmony, uh, Nathan's here. So as soon as Nathan, uh, I see, actually I might see if I can bring him onto the call here. So I'm gonna, you know, done it this way. I've always had guests just click request to join. So here we go, this is something new. Um, there we go, Nathan, how are you? There we go, we're good. There you go, I man. actually tried something different this time. Uh, normally you request to join, but I actually saw that now I, I could actually invite you, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> there you go, so I'm invited to the party. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you're invited. <laughs> <laughs> We've only awesome. got a very short amount of time. You've got 15 minutes until you've got to go pick up your son. Um, yep. It's been a couple of weeks now since we last spoke, and it's been two weeks now since, or nearly two weeks since your episode aired. What's been happening? Not much. Just uh, trying to find a few answers and stuff like that in our environment, environment at the moment. And uh, yeah, so we've just finished week three in the in the schooling term, and uh, yeah, we've had some really good discussions and things like that of not only how we can continue to evolve our program, but where we can take it moving forward next year. Oh, awesome. And what specifically is your program? Yeah, so uh, at Brisbane Grammar at the moment, where uh, I've been fortunate enough to be towards the, oh, I'm in term four now. So uh, obviously, you know, we, met, we discussed it in the, in the podcast episode of relocating in January. And now here we are and, and in the last, last term of the schooling year. And it's just a matter of trying to see what strategies and, and re constantly review things to see if what we're doing is, is being effective and, and are we, do we have the retention uh, that at the desirable levels, levels that we as a team uh, would expect in the strength and conditioning department itself. Yeah, awesome. So the episode that you're referring to is your episode of the Mind Your Body Show, which of course you can listen to at themindyourbodyshow.com and all major platform, uh, podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts and Spotify in particular. Um, I would like to go through and quickly touch on and go into a bit more detail my four big key points. But I've asked if anyone's got any questions um, of you to please ask. As you're talking, I'll keep an eye on what's happening in the comments and I'll try and get those questions asked um, for you so that you can just focus on the information. But the one that really stood out to me, which was the most recent one, which I posted on YouTube and the quote on Instagram, how to develop a high performance life. And we discussed how it's ultimately about clarity and lifelong learning. And you were talking, you actually mentioned that you don't claim to be perfect at it, but do you have anything more to say on developing high performance life? Because this is something that I absolutely love discussing. Yeah, so I, th I think it's, a, it's, ac it's actually funny because when you put the post up, I thought, oh, you know what? Like it just allowed me to reflect on it. And I think you raise a good point in that it's, I think a lot of people when particularly those who work in sport constantly feel like high performance refers to elite performers or professional athletes and things like that. And, and to go to your point on, on a high performance life, I think a lot of the traits, a lot of the characteristics and a lot of the routines, rituals and all these sort of things that can be taken from elite sport can be applied to everyone's day-to-day -day lives. And, and for me personally, it's constantly a little bit what I was talking about before and just how do you review what you're doing and is it really working? So that, that's not only applicable to uh, those around you, your team, uh, those, it's also applicable to yourself as an individual. So um, not only, I suppose, I know it sounds cliche to say I'm my own harshest critic, but the reality is I, I think if you're not your own critic, then you're not really learning and evolving from that. And if you're not throwing yourself into spaces where you're continually getting challenged and, and learning along the way, then, yeah, you, you kind of, 
I suppose you're being stagnant and it's not about everybody else evolving around you. It's how you can evolve as an individual by reflection. And then on top of that, how can your collective and if you are working in a team with individuals around you as well. Um, and that includes relationships too, for that matter. So I do consider my partner to be part of my team. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what I mean by that. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, the second point is seizing the moment. And so in the episode, you talk about seizing the moment in having the opportunity through, uh, I don't know how to put it in um, a nice way, but losing your job essentially with the Australian Rugby Women's Sevens and then um, having, luckily we had JobKeeper here in Australia and you're able to have the best opportunity for paternity leave and then also an opportunity to write the book, The Sporting Parent, uh, and seizing that moment. Yes, yeah, so I think a lot of people can often get caught up in uh, the negative side of things. And don't get me wrong, like I'm not claiming that I'm perfect. I, I'm a very much a realist and, and, and I experience the negative emotions that come with that too. So, but the point of it is, is that it's about seizing the opportunity where you can adapt to your skill set, your passion, your drive in order to effectively roll that out. And, and, you know, sometimes these things can be blindsided like everyone else in the world when it comes to, you know, the, the environment of what's going on in the last 18 months. And it's about seeing, being prepared enough and having a vision to see the opportunities as they present themselves and then accepting them for what they are rather than resenting them and then adapting and shifting so that you can actually work it in your favour, so to speak, so that there is a positive outcome. Now, obviously, we're discussing this on Instagram Live, which I think is the best social media platform on the planet right now. Uh, person, that's my personal opinion. But your third one of four of my biggest takeaways was why every coach must be on social media. Yeah, so... Ten years ago, I, I would have you know, said, I'm not one of those coaches. And you often hear coaches say, I'm not one of those coaches as well. And um, I'd hate to break it to you, but if you are one of those coaches still saying, I'm not one of those coaches, then you're probably missing the point with everyone who's evolving it and adapting around you. Because particularly more so myself, there's nothing more relevant than uh, trying to establish connection, relationships and being on par, so to speak, so that there's a level of understanding with the athletes and students that I'm working with. So there's obviously, you know, a fine line of things that I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. But there's certainly uh, no element there where I can't try and connect to the best of my ability as I can. So um, I've had some really good uh, conversations with coaches and I'll give a gentleman, Nathan Kiley, who uh, has been on a previous episode of yours, he was the biggest driver for me to try and get out of my comfort zone and do it. And, and the irony in that is, at the time, he was actually an intern, I think it was for us, um, in a team that I was working for. And so it just shows you that you can continue to learn and evolve from other people around you. And particularly for me, the older I, I get, um, the I suppose the younger I look for developing coaches to be part of the team because uh, there's certainly a lot of things that I can learn from the, from the younger coaches coming through. And big shout out to Nathan because uh, he certainly helped me out with that. Yeah, I think my biggest takeaway with all that is to just give as much as you can. Give, just try and create as much exposure for other people and try and just be of service in every opportunity. And the more you can be of service to other people, I don't know, you can believe in, you know, karma or whatever, but I just believe, I truly believe in karma. What you give, you get back tenfold. And um, I've been able to connect with so many amazing people like yourself through Instagram in particular. Um, by just simply trying to help share and promote other people. And then you have those conversations and it, yeah, like, man, on Instagram, that little tab on the right there where at the bottom of a post where you can like flag it. And then I've got all these folders saved into I'm Yeah, so do I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do as well, man. I'm that geeky dude who stores everything <laughs> under the different things and uh, everything from a variety of different topics. And, and it, it's funny what you say because, I kind of feel like even though we did our episode on the on the podcast and things like that, that there's still a connection that'll, that'll continue on. And I've got no doubt that I'll be reaching out to you, um, asking you questions and seeing your funky dance moves and things like that as part of your warm-ups. But uh, yeah, it, it's just a cool thing. And, and the other side to it too is obviously, yeah, like if you're a coach, you know, get onto it, get amongst it, get, a, get on board. But the, I think that we fall down this path of, we're trying to prove something on here. And, and I, like 
everyone does it. I'm guilty of it as well. But the reality is I'm on here to try and establish connections and, and try and reduce barriers with the, the athletes that I'm working with. So uh, if there's things that are on here that aren't, you know, things that people can steal like ideas and exercises and stuff like that, I'm cool too because the reality is I'm sure I've got quirky tendencies that tendencies that other people have too. And, and if I can share that with everyone else, then cool. And, and if people like it or, or dislike it, then so what? But the reality is that the athletes that we work with kind of, they can have a laugh at it too or they can say, you know what, I really like that too. So, And, and I think that's the, the really cool part of it. Yeah, I find most people in strength and conditioning just are more than willing to give away their knowledge like personally, uh, if any, uh, I'm happy to give away everything that I know because I'm that confident in what I know that I know I'm continuing with a lifelong learning mentality that uh, like I feel, I just feel completely confident to just tell everyone everything that I know. And I found so many people to be like that. Just, oh, you ask a question and they're, you know, you got half an hour <laughs> for the answer. Yeah. And, and then, and then the, the, the thing with that is a coach said this to me a long time ago when I asked him, he said, and he was working in a, the very top tier team at the time. And I said to him, so like, you know, what's the story of your programming and all these sort of things? He said, you know what? Like, I'll give it to you. And I was in my mind, I was thinking, what this bloke's going to give me his professional thing and all the rest of it. And he said, yeah. And he finished it with saying that I can give you my entire program and everything like that. And he said, because I can guarantee you that you can't roll it out the way that I can roll it out in the environment and context that I can too. And so the thing I think that's really cool that's evolved with social media and things like that is the people who are engaging with it are doing what you're talking about. And the people who aren't, the ones who are hiding in the shadows, and they're usually the ones who are quick to throw the jibes and all these sort of things too, is they're probably more the insecure ones too who aren't prepared to fail. They're not prepared to throw themselves out there and all those sort of things. So uh, it's a double-edged sword. But for me, I'm kind of, at peace with it now and, and there's a lot of coaches that you know i have banter with and and also pick their brain of, of how they're going about doing certain things too so um exactly what you said it's really cool yeah and shout out to my book club official who gave you a round of applause in that comment um and last one real quickly it was why uh, the beauty and difference of coaching women oh he's open a can of worms here <laughs> <laughs> no you know what Here's the thing, right? And it goes with the same thing of just having that element of confidence in, in doing what you do. The same thing that I said in, in the episode. So if you haven't listened to the episode, have a listen to it because the really cool thing about it is is someone like myself and I'm I'm fortunate enough, like yourself too, have coached males, females and all the rest of it. And there doesn't need to be a, a divide, so to speak. Um, but what there does need to be is clarity in understanding the difference between the two. And that is not a negative thing. For me personally, I love coaching girls and women in the fact that they're really inquisitive by nature. Whereas guys, and this is really generalistic, but they can have, you know, the banter and, and chew the fat and, and, you know, hang it on each other and, and things like that, where the girls are more inquisitive to learn as to why they're doing what they're doing. And you still get that with guys as well, but overview the reason why I do like coaching girls and, and, and women in particular is because generally that's that's inherently by nature how, how I've experienced them in the athlete realm well I left the one for last because our next episode which comes out this Sunday night in two days from now is with Kurt Vogel who you know and the topic is men the menstrual cycle and performance so we've already recorded it it was a very very interesting conversation and Kurt goes into um, detail on the research around the menstrual cycle and performance. And in particular, I get really interested in the two-week phase that he talks about where you can push a bit harder in the two-week phase where you kind of got to drop back. And he mentions that maybe, and I hope I'm not quoting this incorrectly, maybe you should be doing more RPE-based prescription as opposed to percentage for that episode. Um, but I know you've got to go and pick up your son. So if you have come through um, on my account to watch this episode, then please hit Nathan's account and follow him for more information on The Sporting Parent. He's been at the highest levels in strength and conditioning and uh, is now ultimately working with grassroots as well as high school athletes. Is that correct? Yeah, that'd be a fair way to put it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, if you come through Nathan's account and you want to see the future upcoming episodes, particularly with Kurt Vogel and uh, menstrual cycle performance, then follow this account here. Um, that's it. Uh, What's on for the weekend? 
Oh, me. I'm trying to brace myself. We're about to move house. So um, I'm sure there's going to be some anxious packing of boxes and things like that. So all the good stuff that kind of comes through. Uh, yeah, some positive stuff, but I suppose it's that delayed gratification. of It's going to be a few weeks yet. So yeah. I thought you just bought a house. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. But we're moving into it. So, uh, oh. so it's really cool. Yeah. So the excitement's kind of come to to an end now and uh yeah there's gonna be plenty of boxes and electrical tape flying around i can tell you that much <laughs> <laughs> probably a bit different to your weekend anyway <laughs> yeah yeah oh it sounds like fun and very very exciting so good luck with it and have fun good stuff thanks very much jacob and thanks to all the listeners of the mind your body podcast i really appreciate you taking the time to tune in for it and i'll certainly be tuning into kurt's one because i'm really interested to in hearing about that yeah cool all right thank you good stuff thanks man yeah